Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at some super successful secrets solely for scaling in SketchUp. That what just happened is called alliteration. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hop in and we're not going to cover the basics of using scale. We did that in the square one video a little while ago. We'll link to the square one video in the description. What I want to do is jump past like the basics of how scale works. And I want to dive specifically into how you can use scale to uh, change your model. Um, some things to note about how scale works. Some people jump in and you know, oh yeah, scale makes stuff bigger, smaller. That's true, but you can deform geometry, you can deform materials. Uh, and there's some stuff in there that people don't generally know about scale. And that's the kind of stuff I want to touch on. So let's hop in right now. All right, first things first, we got two things here. I got this, uh, this fountain in a component here. And over here, I have a group of a one inch cube. So one of the things I want to talk about is how you use scale on different objects. So these are two very different things. With something like this one inch cube, what I could do is I could come in here, I could hit the scale. I'm just hitting S on my keyboard to activate the scale shortcut. I'm gonna drag this this way, and I'm gonna tell it I want it to be exactly 3.5 inches. And I'm gonna drag it this way, exactly 1.5 inches. And then this, I wanna go up and I'll say eight foot enter. Okay, so from that one inch cube, I just created an eight foot two by four. I have used this specific method to frame entire structures, to put in floor framing, trusses, wall framing. Everything has come from this one cube. There's a lot of editing that happened. Obviously trusses, some stuff had to get cut at angles and that kind of thing. But basically the same geometry is used over and over and over again. So an important piece of that is that it is a group and not a component, because if it's a component, as soon as you edit, you know, I, I, I take one right here, I bring one over here and as soon as I edit this one, I got a problem because it's going to change that. But uh, yeah, so I can grab this right here, drop that down four feet, four feet long, and I have two uh, two by fours. You can even use this method to report upon using something like the native uh, report generator, because what I can do is I can report on the blue, the Z axis length of each of these components to get a cut length. So it is important in that case, just side note, that I do keep this blue axis, the length of this piece. So if I wanted this to be laying flat on the ground, I wouldn't want to use scale to, you know, distort this length like this. I wouldn't want to do this. This would cause problems because now my blue length is, you know, my inch and a half. What I want to do instead, of course, is take this piece, uh, use rotate, then lay that down flat and then the cut length of this piece because the axis stays inside the group would be this four foot still even though it's laying outside so that's some some super cool easy editing you can do with scale you can take just that cube and you could make all the framing you need uh, with a couple of clicks pretty cool when it comes to let's say non symmetrical geometry like this uh, I can use scale, of course, to change the size of this fountain. Is this a little, this is sitting on my desktop, a little cute fountain like that? Or is this, in, you know, in front of a palace or something? Is it huge? That's pretty easy, right? Scaling the whole thing, not a problem. If I go and start distorting in other directions, though, so say I want to just make this scale, or make this, I don't know why I call it a scale. It, it is a fountain. I want to make this fountain taller. I can do that, but look what happens. Watch the base at the very bottom. See how that base is squashing or stretching? That's because scale always uniformly distorts the geometry. So as I stretch it up like this, it's gonna end up with a longer piece up here than it is down here. And this might be okay. This might, I mean, this fountain might not be exactly the fountain, but I know it represents something that's eight feet tall. So I'm gonna stretch it up to eight feet and that might not be a big deal. I might be perfectly okay with that. Where I wanna be careful is doing stuff like if I grab this and squish it this way, now this is obviously, well, most likely not what I'm gunning for. This is a distortion of the geometry that's making it look weird. I mean, this could be, this is kind of a cool look. This, uh, you know, I like it, I like it. But um, yeah, now we're just talking about fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, so it is possible to distort, but you do have to be conscious when you move something on one direction on a non-symmetrical thing like this. Anything that's not a cube, basically, 
it's going to distort the geometry. It could be good, it could be bad. It's just something to note. And if you know this is going to happen ahead of time, uh, you can prevent yourself from ending up with some weird, ugly looking geometry because you stretched it out. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about components. Everybody knows in the world of SketchUp, if you come in and you manipulate a component, it's gonna change both components, right? So if I grab this, this handrail on the end or this, this end of this chair, I start moving around, it moves in both copies. But if I select it from the outside and I hit scale, I can actually take this and I can make it smaller without changing this piece over here. Now, that's not without repercussions. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this this way. And I made a chair out of this bench, that's cool. But if you look at this metal piece right here, see how thin that is? versus over here, that's significantly thicker because it took this whole thing and squashed it down. You didn't notice it with these horizontal pieces because like the cube we played with over here, they're just getting scaled along one axis. This is okay if I'm doing something like, you know, maybe not that, that exaggerated of a scale, but if I took this and I wanted to make it, you know, it's a five foot bench, but in, I'm using it as a four foot bench so I could scale it down like that. If that's in the grand context of a huge park or something like that, awesome, all good, no problem at all. Obviously, if this was gonna get fabricated or something like that, this metal piece is not the right size anymore, that could be an issue. If I wanted to do that, then I'd have to come in here and you know probably use a combination of maybe move to move this in a specific direction, and then I guess I could still use scale on these guys right here but I'd wanna do something like that if I wanted to really be careful about maintaining the piece thickness inside here. But I did wanna point out that you can use scale on the outside without affecting the other copies. This is because I'm, I'm distorting the container. I'm distorting this, this blue box that's around it and not the actual geometry. So something to think about. It's a quick, easy way to you know, add variance and a little diversity to your components and your model. Uh, without messing with every single piece that's in there. All right, let's talk about materials. If I had to pick a question about scale that comes up the most often on our forum, forums.sketchup.com, for those of you who have not been there, I would say it has to do with scaling materials. So I have two identical squares here with the exact same materials on them. This right here is just a face. See, it's raw geometry. This right here is a group. It could be a component, doesn't matter. They behave the same in this instance. If I grab this face over here and I hit scale and I start scaling, look what happens. I'm scaling down the geometry, but the material that's applied to it is staying the same. That is intentional, that's how it's supposed to work. If I grab this piece right here and hit scale, this is the group, as I scale it, look what happens. It shrinks that because again, just like the bench I had over here, this is taking the container, the wrapper around it, and squishing it. So everything inside squishes together, and that means the material as well. So if you want to scale something and have it maintain the default geometry, you do have to scale the geometry on the outside. If you scale, ever scale component or group or anything from the outside, it's going to squash down the material uh, because you are that's what you're telling it to do. You're saying take it from the outside and rescale the whole thing. All right, one last thing I wanna to touch on. And this is the thing that, there's several ways that, that this issue uh, brings itself to light. So right here, I have a little toy car. I come in here, I got uh, the body, and then I think each of these wheels, both sides, yeah, so that's a component. And then uh, inside there, got some nesting going on. There we go, there's two. So I have, a couple pieces here. I grabbed that, made a copy, scaled it up by five. So that's all I did was this was a group, not a component, made a copy, scaled five, boom, that was it. That got me this. Now, if I select this, I have the option of reset scale. If I hit reset scale, look what happens. It goes right back to the size of the original geometry. I could actually come in here piece by piece. So I could grab this piece and say, just reset the scale on that guy. And then you reset scale. And then you, this is gonna be bad because it's gonna be all this different location now, but I can reset each of these pieces individually, or like I said, I can do it all as a group. Now, 
This is not a good thing or a bad thing. This is just a thing. This is how this works. This is, it can be a great way to get back to where you were. It can also cause problems. The biggest problem that I see people hit here is they scale at a large scale. They scale, you know, I do this too. So this is not, this is not calling anybody out or, or complaining, but I'll model at a large scale. And then afterwards, take the whole container and scale it down to what size it's supposed to be. That's fine. But the problem is if you hit rescale on something that was, you know, 30 feet and then you scale it down to three inches and you hit rescale, it's going to go back to 30 feet. So it is something to be, there's, you know, a caution on there. Uh, if you do have reset scale on something that's small, you may run into a problem because it may shoot it back up to the scale you scaled it at. You can always fix that. If I have something that's small that was scaled larger, just right clicking and exploding and then making it a group again will reset that geometry so you don't have that problem. Uh, just something to be conscious of. You notice on this one, reset scale is disabled because this is at the original scale. This guy right here that's bigger, he has reset scale. So I hit that, it scales it back down. Now that I click on it, reset scale is disabled because it's at the default scale. So that is a handful of suggestions specifically for scale when using SketchUp. So like I said, Hopefully nobody's let down by the fact that we didn't go into basics and how to use scale and modifier keys and all that. Like I said, check the, check the description down below and you should see a link to a square one video that will give you that information. That's simple stuff. Uh, this I wanted more to be a little bit, you know, this is like the next level. This is what I call level up SketchUp. You know, take SketchUp to the next level. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you know somebody who would benefit from this, I don't mean that in a bad way. Isn't, don't use this as a diss. Don't 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 like call somebody out on their weak scaling skills by sending this video. But if you know some new models with SketchUp and they might get some out of this, share it with them. That'd be awesome. And of course, please subscribe. We create several videos like this each and every week, and you'll be notified of every one of them if you subscribe. And to top it all off, leave us a comment. I know I'm asking for a lot, guys, but uh, yeah, let us know what you think of this. Do you have a scaling tip that I missed? I love hearing that. Sometimes I mean, we do these every week, so we have a lot of stuff going on, and every once in a while, we'll miss something. Love hearing you guys go, oh, here's how I use scale. Here's a tip that I found out. Leave that in the comments down below. See you next time. Thanks.